a part of it. New York, New York. All right, welcome everybody to Derek's podcast. Here with my guest, Andy Sprague, A S K H S class of 2020. So, Andy, how you doing today? Doing pretty good. Uh, thanks for having me on. I've been, uh, I've always wanted to come on a podcast, so it's, it's kind of cool for me to for you to reach out. It's pretty cool. I liked it. I liked the idea. And then, um, obviously, you graduated um, two years ago. So, like, what have you been up to, like, since graduating South Kingstown? Uh, so I've been uh, at Wentworth Institute of Technology studying studying civil engineering. Uh, I played uh, played club hockey there, not this past year, but my first year there. Um, but I've just been there. I work as a lifeguard in the summer at East Matunic. So I've just been going to school and playing sports here and there on the side. So obviously you mentioned your, uh, you play um, club hockey your freshman year at Wentworth. Um, what was that experience like? And then also, like, what went into the, the – like, why basically in your sophomore year this year did you not play club? Uh, so my first year I decided to play. It was – um the season wasn't too long. It was only a couple games. So it wasn't wasn't that much of a hockey season. And then this this uh, this past year I just – I decided not to do it. Um, I had too much work going on. I, I'm – and uh, the engineering kind of caught up to me. The first first year was pretty easy, but that, that second year was tough. So I had to, I decided to focus more on school. And but I think I'm planning on playing next year. Yeah. And then how was? I mean, obviously you said like the first year it wasn't as hard, but like how was the um, transition of first of all going to college, and then second of all like being like playing a sport as well as focusing on your academics at the next level. That's playing definitely it was college. pretty it's not it's it's uh it's division three club so it's not a huge commitment but there's definitely like definitely have to work your work your schedule around it a little bit you know you're not you're going to be you know you're not always going to be free on friday saturday nights your weekends are kind of packed with hockey so it's, it's it's like a different it's like a different kind of thing it's not much of a huge transition because you know there's only a couple practices a week it's similar to high school so it wasn't it wasn't that tough, but definitely the work got harder as I went into my sophomore year. So it was definitely harder to manage it. That's why I decided not to do it. Yeah. And then, like obviously, you played football um, in high school. You did hockey as well. Um, what was the decision for you to not like play football, like either as like either um, like just flag football or anything like that in high in um, college? What was the decision of not playing um, football at all at the once you uh, go to college and go to Wentworth? So my, so the, my, I decided to pick a school based on like what I wanted to do and not really on the sport. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of what my school didn't have football and we're, we're small schools. They didn't offer much, much intramural sports like flag football like that. But um, I just decided that I was done with it. I played for 10 years. You know, it's, I didn't, I didn't feel like it was worth going to like the D3 route spend another four years like that. I, I just felt like I was, I ended on good terms when where I like to end and uh, I thought I was done with it. And then like, how, like, was that decision to uh, like fully be done with sports? Like, how was that decision first of all? And like, like looking back on it, you're not playing any sports. So like, how, how are you, like, how are you doing? Like not being able to like not playing sports, obviously just doing club hockey, but like yeah. the experience of not like having a year of like not necessarily no activities but for all intents and purposes nothing kind of going on it's, besides uh, it's academics tough. yeah it's tough so sports definitely bring a lot to the table that you don't even realize a lot of friends you can make a lot of different activities that you go to it's kind of like it definitely gets you out more so it's it's a lot harder when like you're not playing a sport because I've played sports my whole life to like to like you have to like almost like reach out, make friends different ways. And it's kind of like, it's a different aspect that I, I never thought of, but it was definitely tough and hard. And uh, it was a tricky adjustment at first, but I feel like as I gone on, as I moved into the, uh, the rest of the year, I had a better semester and made more friends. So at first it can be tricky, but once you realize, you know, all right, I got to get out more. I don't have these other sports to do. It can, it's, it's not bad. And then what do you say the significance of sports has like in your life, just like in general? Because obviously it's not that you just played hockey or just played football. You played both of them. And I believe you also were on the cross team. So it's like yeah. 
you're an athlete, you play all different sports. So like, what was the significance of sports just in your life in general? It was just, it was kind of, I, I feel as if like you kind of, some people you take it for granted until you don't have it. So it was definitely very significant because it was something for always, I had always had something to do. It was, I never really worked out growing up. So I was always staying in shape off sports. So when I stopped, I had to realize, you know, maybe I have to start working out. I have to do a lot of other things that I had never thought of before because it was just, I don't need to because I'm playing sports. So it was definitely, a, it's definitely like, um, you definitely take it for granted base some sports and when you're playing them and you definitely, once you stop playing, you definitely can miss them and definitely you miss being with the team and the team atmosphere. And then let's go back to, obviously um high school like first of all how is your experience not necessarily just playing sports but how is your experience at south kingston high school in general and uh just speak to that a little bit uh i i loved it everything about it i loved it i played all four years hockey football and lacrosse i thought it was great i always um it was always my favorite part of the day going to practice having games i loved uh, just everything about it was great um i know it sounds like cliche but you know some of the those four years were great for me and uh, the sports were awesome. And um, the team atmosphere, you know, you really grow as a team. You get a lot closer to kids. You become friends with kids you've never even met before. You know, there's the freshmen on the team. You know, I always tried to incorporate everybody in on the team. So I always tried to get to know some of the younger kids. I always try to get to know the older kids when I was a freshman. But um, it's definitely a, it's definitely a big part. It was definitely a big atmosphere. And I, it was great. I always thought. And then what would you say you miss, like, about, um, like, South Kingston High School in general? Like I was saying, like, the, uh, like, the team, like, definitely, like, the team atmosphere and just being a part of it and just being, you know, having stuff to do. Because, you know, when you don't have sports, you, you kind of have a lot of time to fill. And I never had, I never had that time before. And I kind of, like, just took it, took it for granted. So. I kind of missed the, you know, just having stuff to do, like just having somewhere to go. Uh, I got, I can't but saying, you know, friend, I can't, I got practice saying stuff like that. And then what do you say? Like, obviously you went to Wentworth, which is in um, Boston, Massachusetts, I believe. So yeah. like, well, first of all, what was the significance of just South Kingstown as a whole, like growing up in, in South Kingstown? And then like, what was your decision like to not necessarily like get out of, of South Kingston, Rhode Island, but still stay s semi local as uh, Wentworth is not too, too far away, but it's still like out of the state a little bit. Um, so I always, I always loved Boston going to Boston as a kid. So I always, um, I always knew that was an option for me. I didn't know like where in Boston, but I always thought like Boston was a cool area. I found Wentworth based on the, the major and the school itself. So that's kind of where I, I decided on. I had a most, but I would say most of my schools were in the New England area. I had a couple outside of New England, but they weren't never really like options. I, I just felt like I liked, I like where I live. I always loved growing up here. I, I love everything about South Kingston. So I always thought, you know, the whole New England area is awesome. So I always loved it, being in New England, being in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. I played a lot of hockey in Massachusetts growing up. So yeah, I always, I always just thought I'd stay here and never, it's never really been a thought to go anywhere else kind of. And then like, what is your like biggest motivation? Like what, like what motivates you to succeed, mm -hmm. whether it be in sports or whether it be in academics or just in life in general? The sports, I would say it's like, uh, it's big time, like self-motivation. I kind of like want to see myself like, do better and like stuff I always just want to be the best I can I feel like when I'm doing in sports the school on the other hand I definitely say it's more like my parents aspect I never really loved school but I feel like they they definitely motivate me to keep going and keep pushing and then what would you say like looking back like obviously looking back a little bit what would you say like in particular that there had to be like one moment that maybe you not maybe you wouldn't have loved to happen, but it happened and you learned like a lot from it. Like, can you uh, elaborate on like, what was that one moment? What did you learn from it? And like, just in general, like how is, how has that moment shaped who you are as a person? There's, um, I definitely say like the, uh, 
in in my championship lacrosse game my junior year that we won I was playing I, I was in my head I felt like I was playing bad and I uh, I told the coach I like tried to I was like take me out like I'm horrible like I'm not playing good but he was like no trust yourself you know definitely just keep going just keep fighting it's not the end like I definitely say that was a big part of that was definitely like the a moment that sh- pops into my head right now like the fact that even though you don't believe in yourself, that you, if you have the people around you and the people and the support that you can keep going and, you know, sometimes it's all in your head and that, you know, it's not that bad and you should keep going. I definitely say that that one moment pops into my head. And then looking back um, high school wise, obviously COVID kind of dented a little bit of that senior year, like just in general, how was COVID for you? And like, just like, how did COVID impact you? COVID, it was um, definitely tough on me, tougher than I thought it would be. You know, obviously, you know, like everyone else, I thought when it happened, you know, free two weeks of school. But for me, right off the start, that that March 13th, my championship hockey game was canceled. So right off the start, COVID was horrible for me. It was just from then on, it was just, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't do great alone. I, I, lived my, I lived alone my first year of college. That wasn't good. So, you know, it's it's been tough on me. I definitely say it's been tough on me, but as I keep going through the semester, like playing club hockey definitely helps you a little bit, you know, the sports aspect of it. You know, when you start making more friends, you start doing other stuff. It, it's been it's been better, but it's been I would say the beginning was definitely very like pretty bad for me, I don't think. And then obviously I remember like the beginning of COVID where, you know, the hockey team that you're playing, I think, was overseas, I think, before they played the hockey team. So they were had like a trip overseas and then they came and that's kind of how oh, like SK first got it got started. Yeah, like explain yeah, that, that was, a little bit for me. So our first round of our first round series, we were playing Providence Country Day. It's a call. It's a three team co-op and uh, a couple of kids just just gotten back from a trip to Europe and, and the whole school got shut down. And the hockey team that played for it, they had to, they forfeited their series to us, and that's kind of how like COVID got brought to Rhode Island almost really. Mm-hmm. And from then on, we were able to play the next round. We made the championship, and then the day before, that's the day that they just decided to cancel everything. Okay, so it wasn't a team that you guys had to play that got that got the COVID or. So there was players on, there was one or two players on the team we were playing in, in the first round that had COVID and then they, they forfeited the, the, the series. Okay. Cause I thought I got word that the, um, t- that you guys played a team and they had COVID and no. then it started to co- go, that the COVID it was, um, started it was, to get into. It was kids from the, it was kids from the school. It was okay. kids from the school. Yeah. Okay. No, cause rumors were having and time everybody, everybody's like, freaking out and whatever oh, really? SK was... players well no so what I heard is that you guys played a team that had COVID so you guys would have got COVID and we still like it was that week where we had like class oh. Oh, like and we, that you guys the, that the hockey, the hockey team, team had COVID blamed? people thought that the hockey team had COVID so I don't know if it, in some of your classes I think in some of mine like a teacher wanted like the hockey players like in the back and they wanted them like kind of isolated and I was just like, I sat next to like five hockey kids in like all of my classes, and I was like, I don't do I yeah, like I like do I have co- do I have COVID or something like that? Wow, I never heard that. I don't, no one ever told me that. That's all. That's hilarious. Because I was in all my classes, and I was like, no, someone, never, I couldn't remember who it was, but someone told me that you guys played a team like had none COVID. of us had it. And, none of okay, us had it. and I was thinking to myself. Think myself, I'm next to like six or seven guys, like from the hockey team, in like every every single class. And I was like, "Shit, this is this is not good. This is not good. This is not good." Oh, we were kind of getting blamed for that. That damn, I didn't know that. It wasn't necessarily you guys. It, it was, I was just looking at it from a perspective of everybody. Yeah, they yeah. brought it to us. Like it's not. No, just yeah, not I get, us. It's I like that. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. Crazy. So, like, obviously, going to Wentworth, like, first of all, how has, like, college life just been for you just in general? Definitely the second, uh, my second year was a lot better than my first year. My first year was, um, I was more isolated. You know, I didn't have many roommates. 
Now this year I had a full room, you know, the mass policies were a lot more lenient, a lot more things were open. I went to a bunch of Bruins game, Red Sox games. It was definitely a lot better. Like it, like personally, like the experience wise. Like and then what you say, yeah. and then what you say, like, obviously I just had my first year of college. So like, can you talk a little bit about just what is college life and how like exciting it is and like the things that you can do that you normally wouldn't have thought you would have done before yeah. like going to college? You're kind of, it's, it's like, it's kind of crazy. It's a kind of crazy idea. College just, you know, sending off these 19 year old kids, 20 year old kids to just live on their own for the first time. But like, it's a lot of, you know, you're, you're, you held yourself accountable. You have to hold yourself accountable for a lot of stuff. There's not, you know, your parents aren't over you saying, um, you know, it's like funny, but like you miss a lot of meals. Like you don't, you know, you know sometimes, you know, be, you know, you're hanging out in your room all crap. It's three o'clock. I never ate lunch. Like now, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of little things that you miss that you take for granted. Like I've been saying, like, there's a lot of little things that you don't realize are going around. Like you gotta, you know, some nights you're going to be up till 2 a.m. studying. Like, I've, like, I never, like, I never, like, realized that. Like, you, you, time management is the biggest thing. Like, if you know how to manage your time, you'll be fine. But if you get lazy with it, it starts to pile up fast. Mm -hmm. Time management might be, uh, might be number one for all those people going into college. You gotta, you gotta get your, uh, gotta get your, gotta get your act together get a schedule and like know what you're doing like you know you want to do your work during the week so you know you're you're able to do what you want on the weekends and which is another great part of college is you have that freedom to do what you want and but you got to be responsible about it because you know there's no one telling you what not to do it's a lot of decisions exactly. you got to make for yourself and then what do you say like you look back on a moment like you mentioned um earlier about junior and high junior in high school and like obviously winning um tournaments what would you say like is your proudest moment so far from college or from high school or just, just from life just from life in general proudest moment um uh i'm not really i don't know it's a tough one like I it can be but, academically or athletically like obviously you like as an athlete have like won like big events and stuff like that but i was thinking more of like a personal goal of like oh i made this shot like in hockey or whatever and yeah, no I one see. expected like an underdog type of mentality type, i like type the uh, like i think more of like um i like how people see me so i like how um my i always i always took pride in like when i talked about it earlier being friends with everybody tried to make like the team like a more of a team atmosphere so i always um i always liked uh there's um there's it's funny you probably know the name there's a kid ben burden from, I've from heard it. Yeah, yeah yeah and he always used to he came up to me and said thanks for a great season uh that always i always loved that because i always knew that i was able to connect with everybody on the team and not just you know stick with my friend groups i like to make the whole team a team atmosphere so i was very like very proud of myself when like i knew i did connect with some of the kids and made it out like that and then where do you think that like leadership comes from? Do you think it's just a natural ability or do you think it's like learned like anything like that? Um, it definitely is. It's definitely learned. I feel like I always, I always looked up to my brother and I played every sport with him. I played it. He was the captain for all my sports teams when I was growing up. So he always kind of was like a precedent for me, you know, Bobby Sprague, you probably know him, but um, yeah. Heard the name. Yeah. <laughs> So I am definitely, I definitely would say like, that's where it comes from. I always kind of looked up to him. Yeah. And then like, this is kind of like relating to that, but like, who would you say is like the biggest like impact on your life? Like you mentioned your brother, but is there like anybody else that is kind of like. Helped? I definitely say my parents, my parents keep pushing me. They keep driving me. There's a lot of times you want to, you want to give up, maybe drop out of school, but they, they're always there supporting me. So I definitely think I'd say my mom and my dad. And then obviously we've been mostly talking about like you playing uh, different sports, obviously club hockey at uh, Wentworth and then obviously football in high school. So like when you're watching just either hockey, football, whatever it is, whatever type of sport you're watching, obviously you went to Red Sox game as well, as well. Like, what are you looking at? Do you have more of a 
perspective of like a fan or are you more just there for the love of the game? Is there something you're analyzing? Like what type of, like what's your mindset? Like There's when watching a, a game? Some things, I definitely would say I do that with hockey a lot. I like to like, like, uh, like when I watch hockey, it's like different from like a normal fan, like in most other sports, like baseball, I would just say I'm just there fan, like watching basketball. I'm not a huge fan. So like, I'm just kind of watching, but like with hockey, I kind of like, I, I comment a lot more on the plays. Like I know what I'm talking about, but like, like I definitely would say that I'm more of like, I'm, I would definitely say I'm analyzing the game when I watch like hockey and football a little bit too, not as much. Cause I kind of like to just enjoy it. And, you know, there's – I'm not – ever – I'd definitely say I was more of a hockey player, and I like to – I like to think about it. So I like to watch the games and definitely, like like you said, analyze and, like, see what's going on, see what people did wrong there, think about this stuff like that. Yeah, so, like, there's a different – there's a much different perspective when I watch hockey than, like, any other sports, I would say. I mean, I'm not a huge hockey guy, but, like, obviously you talk about plays – but is there like something in particular that you're looking for? Like, is it something to do with like how they skate necessarily, or is it more like how they handle the puck type of thing? It's more like it's more like positioning on the ice, like like where a player is, like like how like um like how like some passes they make. Like if you watch like a hockey game with like a someone who played hockey their whole life, they'll they'll be they'll be commenting on like what a great pass. That's always like something they say because a lot of the times hockey players know how hard it is to make that pass. So when we see it happen, like we're pretty amazed, more amazed than we would usually say like, like a good shot or something like that. Cause we expect that from some of the players, but like when you see something that's like, like, like a pass that's insane or like someone like, how, could, how did he think to be in that position before? Like a lot of the players in like the NHL think two steps ahead. They're very smart. So they're, they're, you know, they're there before the pucks there. So that's that's kind of how it that's kind of how I look at it. Okay, yeah, I remember um, I was doing something um, at college, and I was uh, editing a video clip, and I can't remember what it was, but it was one of those highlights of um, it was during a trick shot thing, one of those trick shots using this like weird thing or whatever. You might you probably know what I'm talking about, but not the exact moment. And he shot it, and I was just like, like I don't know hockey, but I was just like, like I was just like in awe yeah. of like how it's even just like possible to do there's definitely like, like such a thing some of the some of the things they do are like obviously like amazing but like I definitely look at like not necessarily the physical aspect but like the mental like how people think the game instead of how they actually play it like because you know you know like there's like Alex Ovechkin one of the great hockey players of all time I'm not really amazed anymore when he scores from the same place he scored 600 times like yeah. I, I expect him to do that but when, you know, he, you know, he makes a mental play that, you know, in my mind, I, I'm not even thinking of that's, that's the thing. That's the kind of thing that you get more like amazed by. Mm -hmm. And then obviously uh, you're at Wentworth and you said you're studying engineering, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, Where do you see yourself like down the line, like after college, like I, I usually say roughly like 10 years, but like, where do you see yourself like after college and like, what are your like plans of obviously you want to get a job in engineering. You obviously still want to watch yeah. sports, like that type of thing. But like, where do you actually like see yourself either location wise or just like, what do you see yourself doing after um, I college? See, I see myself if you're talking location. I, um, I recently just visited um, Colorado and I, I, I mean, I want to go back right now. I'm a big skier. I love the winter. I like the winter more than I like the summer. So I love, I just love being around the mountains and, you know, I'm the engineering wise. I see myself being like, I like to work in the field. I like to work with my hands. So I'm a civil engineer, which is a lot of like road building bridges and stuff like that. So I can definitely see myself like working, like, you know, at a construction site out in like um, Colorado, obviously would be preferable around there because I love, I love being there. I love how much, when for the little time I was there, I loved it. And I was definitely saying to myself, I want to live here. I want to be back here. So I would say like 10 years, like, yeah, like maybe living there, skiing every weekend. That's probably it. <laughs> and then like, obviously like as an engineer, uh, the jobs aren't like you live lived in Colorado, like there would be less um, action, I would say. 
So what, what are you looking for? Like when you're like, like you kind of said, like a construction worker per se, like, are you looking to like be at different places? Like, are you more like wanting to yeah. like look I mean, out and like explore or is it like, I want to be kind of stationed at one place and kind of like help that state run like the construction like areas i would say i would say i wouldn't i wouldn't say i have like like a goal to try to i guess like bring like better roads to one state or anything like that i would just say like moving around and exploring definitely would be that like like i wouldn't be opposed like every two years you know getting a new job somewhere else just so i can be somewhere else like i see more as like i like the job because it, well, it, it pays, it pays pretty well for what it mm. is. And I like what I like, I like what it is. So I would definitely say that's, that, that's a good part of it. But I, I wouldn't say I like, I would say the job's more like, I, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be my life. I would say that I don't want to be, you know, stuck at the same job forever. So like moving around would definitely be like more of my mindset. And then, like, obviously, um, like, some of the South Kingstown community knows you. I know you a little bit. But what would you say is, like, one thing about you that, like, stands out amongst others? Oh, my hair. But, no. Um, uh, I, like, uh, like I said before, I try to – I'm pretty outgoing. I try to – I don't usually make – I try not to make poor impressions with people. I like to be I'm, – I'm pretty easygoing. So that's that, that's kind of – I guess, you know, like in high school, I was, I had, I was kind of friends with, and I'm not saying I was friends with everybody, no one's friends with everybody, but like, I tried to be friends with more, you know, you know, I would, I don't try to, I don't like to judge people based on how they are. So like, that's, that's kind of me. I, I kind of just, I like to get to know people or, you know, not to judge people anymore. I would definitely say like over the past two years, since I've left high school, I would definitely say I've, I've tried to like stay away from that, like judging people based on not knowing them. So I like to, I like to say I'm like, I guess I'm known as like outgoing, friendly. I try to, I guess I would say. And then like we met, we basically mentioned um, sports throughout this podcast. Like, what would you say is like the number one thing that you've learned from sports in general that you can like continue on your life? Like, let's just say 30 years down the road, you'll look and be like, Hey, sports did this for me I would definitely say like before like the, that leadership aspect of it you know being the person that you know when something's going on that people look up to I'm I'm, I'm also a, at the beach I work at I'm the captain so that's another thing I like to do I like to be I like I like being in those situations where you know I I have to make the decision I'm, I'm okay with telling people what to do like I think that's definitely that's definitely the biggest thing I've gotten from sports, like that leadership, you know, the ability to, to not to, you know, to be calm in certain situations, to be, to be able to have a bunch of people look up to you and to make the right decision. And like, you've always talked about how leadership is like a big uh, part of you. Like, um, let me just think for a second, like does leadership, necessarily like obviously it helps like the people around you and like stuff like that but like do you do you see yourself like whatever you do that you see yourself as a leader like no for, I, for I, an example like once you were at, uh, as a freshman like going into high school or a freshman going into college like how did you like obviously you got that leadership leadership mindset but like how do you like kind of adjust from like learning instead of being that like that guy who's that who's that who's a leader I definitely would say going back to my freshman year of high school on the football team I would I would say like the seniors then I'm not trying to like knock them or anything but like they weren't as involved with like the younger kids so that's kind of when I was like well I remember being there so I don't really I and I remember it wasn't great so that's that was kind of the goal I, I tried to want to connect with everybody because I remember what it was like and so when I'm coming onto a new team, I, I would say I definitely am, I'm a lot more quiet when I don't know like a lot of the people, but as soon as I get that, like that knowledge and like you, you try to build the respect and, you know, the confidence of other people. Cause after, if you get the respect and the confidence of everyone else, the, the age kind of goes out the window when you're in the college. 
because you know you could be a freshman at 20 and your first year on the team there's so many different kids doing a lot of different things so it's it's a it's a di- it's a lot different from being a freshman in college to being a freshman in high school and then obviously like we've mentioned your class of 2020 from south kingstown high school like what do you like just what do you miss like obviously you mentioned like about like what do you miss but like is there a particular moment where you're like damn like i'm out of i'm out of south kingstown i'm I'm gonna miss like i'm gonna miss that place oh yeah i definitely i still miss it i miss a lot of the teachers a lot of the just being in school i loved walking through the hallway seeing everybody you know some people say high school was horrible and i liked it i enjoyed it I liked being there. I, you know, I didn't dread getting up in the morning. I did dread getting up in the morning, obviously, but you know, I liked, um, I liked seeing my friends. It was the best part of it. You know, you go to school, you get to see your friends every day, you know, your friends have been friends with them for 12 years. So it's, you know, it's tough at the end of it, you know, that's why college is a lot more different. I would say for me, because, you know, that's why you, you have to try. It's a lot of self-motivation in college because you don't have, that like yeah, and if I'm, if I'm gonna have a bad day, I guess I got my friends around me. Like, you gotta you gotta drive yourself. I would say. And last question for you. Obviously, you just graduated high school in 2020. So, like, what are you looking forward to in the high school reunions? Oh, we had a we so we had one last summer because we because we never got a graduation. Yeah, we had a graduate we had a, a reunion last summer because we never had we had never had a prom a senior prom so mm-hmm. we had a bunch of money that we just never spent so we had it we had one last year and um I would just definitely say seeing the people I like I know I still see a lot of my, my some of my best friends from high school but there's definitely a lot of people that you don't see and you know it's it's sad so you know in the reunion I'm, I definitely plan on going because why not it's people and I like seeing the people from high school so I definitely would say I'm just I'm just looking forward to seeing seeing the people that I didn't that I don't really see that as much anymore. All right, and that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you, right. Andy, for joining me on this uh, lovely evening. Oh, thanks, thanks for having me on. This was awesome.